Hi everyone, welcome to this. This is the, the first of our vlogs for the um, Beethoven Symphonies elective. And I'm just gonna use these just very briefly um, over the course of the, the term to catch up on a few ideas that we go through uh, in the class, in the lectures. And also I'm gonna um, talk about that and, and set you a bit of a challenge for this, this next week that's coming up. I uh, just thought I'd grab a few moments to do this. Now I've got uh, my son in the back of the car who's fallen asleep, so hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll, he'll uh, stay that way for now or else uh, um, we'll see what happens. Um, so, we, oh, here he is. We, we, met, um, we met on Friday, um, and as you know, um, I had a bit of trouble getting in on Friday uh, with the snow, so I hadn't managed to do um, all of you photocopying uh, that needed to be done. Um, I did stay late on Friday night, so all of that is done now. You get um, this next Friday. You'll get your booklets, which has got all the all the text and notes that you need um, for the entire course, and also the first volume of the musical examples that we'll be um, using uh, to discuss all sorts of different uh, repertoire around uh, Beethoven symphonies. As I mentioned to you, um, that booklet it doesn't have any scores from any of Beethoven's symphonies in it. It's all um, it's all additional music. Um, so if you can make sure that each week you bring along the relevant score um, for a Beethoven symphony to the class, that's that's really important. This next week coming up, uh, the second week is going to be Beethoven symphony number two. If you can make sure you've got a copy of the score for that, uh, bring it up from the library. There's there's loads of copies um, available in the library. If we can get all of those up to the class and then. Um, if you've got like a larger, you know, tablet or laptop or something, you can you can download a copy. Make sure you get one that's got bar numbers on it. That's that's all I said. Um, so, uh, also I should mention actually, um, I am teaching the course as you probably realised from the point of view that you know um, the Beethoven symphonies. This isn't just like an introduction to them, um, and I appreciate you know we all have black spots in our knowledge I certainly have mine um, and so if there's any coming up like this week Beethoven Symphony number no. two which isn't one of the best known symphonies if you can just make sure that you've been through it have a listen to it before the class so that you you know the tunes and you know how it's gonna go um, then uh, we can get straight into to talking about the interesting stuff um, in the class uh, when you've got it in your ears so that's gonna be uh, really important um, so this last week um, we talked about Beethoven Symphony Number no. 1 and early Beethoven um, and in particular I talked about the wind instruments that Beethoven used um, and the importance of wind instruments in Beethoven's childhood compositions, the compositions of his teenage years um, and going on from there towards the first symphony which is of course really quite dominated in parts by those wind instruments in a way that wasn't well expected um, at the time. Um, one thing that I want to introduce to you here is remember this idea that your assignment topics that you're going to be choosing and you choose them yourself you'll come to me with them and, um, and we can discuss them and I'll approve them in the end but they can be about anything that's in some way related to Beethoven symphonies uh, they don't have to be actually about a specific symphony they can be about the violin music or the wind music or the piano music um, and you sort of tie them in a bit with some of the ideas but um, I'm keeping it fairly broad in terms of the the processes the musical processes and the compositional processes um, that uh, we can discuss in relation to Beethoven symphonies because it is my view that all of the most important aspects of Beethoven's compositional language can be discussed in his symphonies but actually we can extract those ideas and apply them to all of our repertoire uh, no matter what um, instrumental or vocal discipline um, we have behind us as a performer um, so that's really important do bear in mind you know if you want to write um, an essay about the wind music um, you might well plunder some of the content from last week's lecture um, in order to do that um, there's some little known works there again you might want to make um, that the topic of um, your um, assignment. Beethoven's oboe concerto, which as I mentioned he did compose one, um, it got lost, but we do have some sketches for it, we do know what the melodies were going to be like and we have uh, most of his work that went towards it. So you could be you know, thinking about something like that. Um, there's also the Joseph Cantata, which I talked about, which is a fantastic piece of music. Um, please do go in search of that. You'll get some um, musical examples of, from the score um, in the first volume of your booklet uh, when you get that this coming Friday. But also, do have a look on the Moodle 
page, um, I'll, I've posted the link to uh, the Spotify playlist that I use in the lecture, so you can follow that up. And I've actually put some extra tracks on that playlist, so you can listen to the whole of that cantata, um, which Beethoven composed, you know, as as a teenager still. He was 19 years old, um, and it's a really, I think, a fascinating and very, very uh, beautiful piece of music. Um, over the course of the weeks, we're going to be discussing um, really quite a lot of different aspects of Beethoven's music. Um, so this coming week, we'll talk about, as I introduced you to last week, Beethoven the improviser, and why I think that the language of improvisation uh, is so important to understanding Beethoven the composer, because I think there's a lot of things that he does as a composer that he probably only really learnt because he was such a good improviser and that really is reflected in the symphonies and a lot of the other music as well. Um, we'll talk about Beethoven's interest in mythology, we'll talk about um, his interest in creating musical narratives and um, heroic ideas, uh, ideas of nature, of um, his interest in religion, and that's not just, you know, Christianity that um, we think of as in the Western tradition, but he was interested in um, Eastern and Indian um, religions as well, and his own religious beliefs seem to be something of an amalgamation of um, all those different um, very uh, international um, ideas of philosophy and religion. So that's um, a really interesting thing that we can see um, did have a direct impact on some of his music that he was writing and does occur in the symphonies as well and changes them in a way that um, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the symphonies in the form that um, they are if he hadn't have been interested in that sort of um, Eastern philosophy as well as um, commonplace Western uh, Christianity. Uh, we'll talk about his other ideas of moral philosophy, ancient literature, uh, his interest in folk music, particularly Scottish folk music and um, Irish folk music, which again have a, an impact on a lot of the music that he's writing and do impact upon the symphonies. And also his interest in Eastern music, exotic music, and how that plays into um, a lot of his music towards the end of his life and the, the Ninth Symphony in particular, um, as we'll discover. But over the course of um, the term, we are going to be discussing a lot of little-known repertoire by Beethoven, and I want you to really open your ears up to that as much as possible because there's some really, really great stuff there. Do bear that in mind about your assignment topic as we go through, because if there's particular things that catch your... Um, imagination, certain things that uh, catch your interest, then you think, oh, I, I quite fancy finding more about that. Even if it's not directly related to one of the symphonies, um, it might well be something that you can um, explore in relation to your own repertoire and write an assignment um, about it in the end. So that would be really good for you. Um, so your little challenge for this week that I mentioned is um, I talked about Beethoven the improviser um, and the way in which a lot of his um, ideas musically seem to be derived from his interest in improvisation. And my little challenge to you is to think of a particular piece of music from your own repertoire uh, in which you think there's maybe some sort of improvisational quality to it or um, something which represents either, not just in the variation form, which is of course very much intrinsically linked with um, improvisation, so you can use that as a starting point, but think more widely as well and just think about how some of those ideas, how Beethoven as a performer had an impact on Beethoven the composer. How can you tell from his music that he was um, a performer as well as a composer and what kind of effect do you think uh, that had on the music that you can witness and talk and take further in your own repertoire. So have a nice little time thinking about that. Go through some of the pieces that you've played and listened to, uh, sung um, and see how you get on with that. And I look forward very much to seeing you with the copies of the booklets to give to you uh, this coming Friday. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye bye for now.